Sorting is the action of arranging items in some order, like ascending, that is, increasing order of value, or descending, that is, decreasing order of value. You might recall doing that in real life. For example, sorting a collection of currency notes in increasing order of value, or sorting a bunch of M&Ms in different colors. But how do you tell a computer to sort? In this video, we'll be talking about one of the many sorting algorithms, the selection sort algorithm. You'll learn how the selection sort algorithm works, how to implement it in Python, and what is its time complexity. Here's a quick overview of the selection sort algorithm. Assume that we want to sort some items in increasing order. The selection sort algorithm does that by first finding the smallest element in the pile and placing it in the first position. Then it finds the second smallest element and places it on the second position, then the third smallest, and so on until there are no more elements left in the pile. Let us take a look at a detailed walkthrough of the algorithm with the help of an example. Consider a list of five cards that need to be sorted in ascending order. At this point, the entire list is unsorted. As the first step, we find the smallest card in this list. We do that by assuming that the first card is the smallest card and comparing it with every other card in the list. When we find a card smaller than the smallest card currently known to us, then we update the smallest card to be this new card. We place this card at the first position because all the cards in the unsorted pile are greater than this card. Now, this card forms a sorted list. Right now, there's just one card in the sorted list, but as we progress through the algorithm, the sorted list grows while the unsorted list shrinks. We will repeat the same step until the unsorted list is finished. We find the smallest card in the unsorted list by repeating the same steps as before, and then place it at the second position. Remember that the first card was smaller than all the cards in the unsorted list. Therefore, the current smallest card is still larger than the first card, but the smallest in the unsorted list. Therefore, it goes behind the first card. Now, the sorted list has two cards and the unsorted list has three cards. Again, we find the smallest card in the unsorted list and place it at the third position. Now, the fourth smallest card and the last card will remain at the last position since it automatically becomes the fifth smallest card or the largest card. Let's translate this into code. First, Let's implement a helper function that returns the position of the smallest element in a list. We first declare a variable called smallest index that stores the position of the first element, that is, zero, assuming that it's the smallest element. Then we iterate through the entire array, starting from the zeroth index till the last index, the length of the array minus one. If the current smallest element is greater than the element at the ith position, then we update the smallest index to be i. At the end of the function, we return the smallest index. Now, let's implement the selection sort function. We first create a loop that finds the ith smallest element in each iteration. The range of the loop is from zero to the length of the array minus one. That is, it first finds the first smallest element, the second smallest element, 
and so on, till it finds the n minus ith smallest element, and the nth element is automatically the nth smallest element or the largest element. To find the ith smallest element, we will use the smallest element function that we declared before. We need to modify this function because we don't need to find the smallest element in the entire array all the time. We need to find the smallest element only in the unsorted part of the array. To do that, we add another argument to the smallest element function, the index from where the unsorted list begins and the sorted list ends. Then we swap the element at the ith position with the element at the smallest index. Notice the two for loops each with time complexity of O of n. Since they are nested, they make the time complexity of the algorithm O of n squared. For both best and worst case scenarios, the time complexity remains O of n squared. Thanks for watching this video. You can check out other similar videos on our channel or subscribe to watch future videos. Goodbye.